Caleb Swanigan is an okay player. <laughs> Um, obviously, it's pretty impressive, you know, back-to-back -back games, getting, you know, 20 rebounds, 20 and 20, and tonight being able to get 30 and 20. Um, but just impressed with his effort, and also, um, you know, just letting things come to him. I know he took 15 shots, but, you know, three of them are threes. You know, he got the ball in the high post against the zone um, a couple times, was in the low post. And so it's, he's getting it in a variety of ways, and he's also being unselfish and passing the basketball. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very important just to, just to make the right play and keep things simple. And, um, but it's also one of those things when you, you, have, uh, you have skill around you and you have size, they have to make a decision at some point unless they just take you out of what you want to do with their overall athleticism. So if somebody doesn't do that, um, or, our, or they try to do it and our guards handle it, mm -hmm. then uh, we're in a pretty good position when you have him in the high post and Isaac in the low post and, and guys that can shoot around. Um, PJ was saying before the game that there was a moment where Caleb didn't like how the team was warming up and just kind of got them together and told them to, to shave up or, or something like that. And I know you may not have been privy to that, but just in general, right. the presence that he now has on this team, how important was that to have someone kind of develop into that right. role in the first half of the season? Well, you know, leadership's in action. You know, anybody can say the right things. Um, it's important uh, to be able to say the right things and, and then do it. And uh, as, as a leader, it's, it's, your, it's your job to be able to, to do things when coaches aren't around. Like everybody, like, like at times, your players don't need to fill that role when coaches are present because that's what you do. But you can't play. You know, your, your careers are up. And so it's so important for those guys to be the coaches on the floor and be able to handle things um, when you're not around. Uh, now, sorry, sorry, Brian. Uh, now that the non-conference schedule has come to a close, how would you, what were you looking to get out of it, and how do you evaluate your team's performance through the non-conference? Well, I thought we, um, you know, I think we in a couple games we handled adversity. We were able to still win um, games in the Georgia State and Notre Dame games. I thought those were uh, two games that really kind of tested our, our character as a team, and our guys responded and played well. Um, the most disappointing was. Um, the way we played in the, in the first half of the Louisville game. Um, I just didn't think we had our, our main guys um, were very productive. And against you know a, a team as good as Louisville, one of the top five, ten teams in the country, you know we have to be able to come out. If you miss shots, you miss shots. But we turned the basketball over. We, we missed point blank layups. You know we just we didn't we didn't play very well. So that's that was probably the most disappointing. But hopefully we can learn from that. And then when you get an opportunity to play. Somebody like that, you know, down the road, you know, you play a lot better. Um, I, I think we're a better defensive team than we were um, five to six weeks ago. There's, there's no question about that. I don't think we're a great defensive team, though. You know, don't get carried away with that. But, um, <laughs> but I do think if you look at our numbers, we've been very consistent. It'll be interesting to see as we play in conference play if I feel that way after, you know, say 19 games in conference play. You know, because sometimes your numbers get inflated um, by the competition that you play. And sometimes your rebounding numbers get inflated also. So when you pull out, say, the two games at Cancun, you know, Louisville, Villanova, Notre Dame, maybe one other. Um, off the top of my head, I don't have a name. But, um, you know, what's your stats then? You know, or do you have a good defensive efficiency? Do you have a good offensive efficiency? Are you a good rebounding team? So I think that really... Um, let you know where you are, and you play a lot of true road games. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a lot of people are, are good. You know, you play on neutral courts, you play at home, you play one road game like we have. Now, when you play three, four, five road games, where are you? Because the team that's going to win this league, or the team that's going to, or the teams that are going to compete to win this league, you're going to have to be, you know, hold serve at home and be able to win some road games and put yourself in that kind of position. So, um, I like I like our improvement. Um, I like the fact that we haven't turned the ball over much in the last three games. I think that's a great sign, and um, you know, just continue to get better. Just continue to improve every single game, and uh, you're making mistakes when you win, and you have to you have to keep that perspective. Um, just like you do some good things, you know, when you lose at times, you got to keep that in perspective. I think it's important when you win basketball games, especially when you win home games, that you got to still fix your problems. You just segue right into my question. Uh, you came to these last three games needing to cut down turnovers. I think the number of tonight's little 
warped reality a little bit because things got ragged at the end. But just what's gone right the last couple games where you've been able to get that number down? I don't think we're doing anything differently besides concentration. And uh, just, you know, it's not, we're not turning the ball over one way. We're not throwing, having 16 turnovers and, and 12 of our bad passes. You know, there, it's a little bit of everything. It's kind of a grab bag. So for us, I, I just think it's overall concentration and, and just being a little bit more fundamentally sound and taking care of the basketball. Uh, but we, we get some things that don't involve the basketball. You know, anytime you get offensive fouls, post it up. You know, when you get a three seconds, which we've gotten a couple three seconds, that doesn't involve the basketball. So there's other types of turnovers, and that's the reason I always put it to being fundamentally sound or the concentration uh, kind of bucket. So, yeah, watch. Matt, you referenced the other night that, you know, basketball is important to big. Right. And sometimes around Christmas games, maybe you should win. Guys, but they, I'm not going to say mail it in, but they right. don't bring, I mean, he brought it. And I, right. it seems like it doesn't make a difference if it's Villanova or North Oak State. Right. He brings it. Yeah. How, how important is that to this basketball team? Well, I think, you know, he's actually a little bit better at times in these settings because he's so excited in the other settings. You know, he's ready to play in this game, but he's not, you know, he's not jumping over the fight. Whereas sometimes I think in Louisville or Villanova or Notre Dame or going to Madison Square Garden, he, you know, he gets a kick out of that. He wants to go, he wants to play, and then he has two to three turnovers before the first media timeout. Um, and so he's, you know, he's really excited and he, you know, he understands the moment and he wants to play well, it means something to him. And so I think sometimes in those settings, going on the road in the Big Ten, kind of calming himself down a little bit would probably help more, um, just from my point of view. But um, it's like I said last time, it's a breath of fresh air. I mean, it's, I say it recruiting a lot. If you don't like basketball, then don't come play here at Purdue. Because I like basketball. It's my passion. I, you know, it's, you know, I like talking about it. I like being around it. It's just, it should be your craft, you know, and it's, it's become his craft. Um, you feel good about when he takes open shots. You feel good about when he goes to the free throw line. Um, the ball's in his hand, you know, you're confident. And, you know, he instills that in, in all of us. Um, or guys don't instill that in you. Like when you, when someone gets the basketball on the court as a fan or somebody who covers the sport or a coach, they instill, like players think coaches instill confidence in them, and it's not that way. Players instill confidence in coaches, just like players instill confidence in you guys because you watch them. And you're like, oh man, you get nervous when a situation comes up because they've made you nervous. Or you feel good when a situation comes up because they've made you feel that way. That's the game of basketball. He has grown on a lot of people, not just in this community, but just Purdue fans because they know they're getting a big time effort. You know, they know he wants to win. You know? And so those things are refreshing. And not to say other guys don't, but um, you definitely see that he wears his emotions on his sleeve and he's gonna attack. You know, when he gets in there. To go back to the turnovers, um, I know a lot of those are coming through the front court, but there's another seven assists, no turnovers for PJ tonight. Um, how has he played into that over these last maybe six or seven games? Because it's a pretty stark ratio over those right. stretch. Well, he's been great. You know, his, you look at it, he's got the best assist turnover ratio in the history of our school. It speaks for itself. And now he's, he's consistently done that. I, he's been more aggressive shooting the basketball, and that's what we want. You know, we want him to be more aggressive, I thought. Tonight, all five, five out of six of his shots were good. The one shot was a bad shot. Um, but I, you know, he had a couple big threes in the Notre Dame game. We, we want him to be aggressive. We want him to look for a shot, drive the basketball, and still take care of it. And uh, it's, you know, that's what you want from your point guard. He's a steady hand, and um, he gets us where we need to, you know, to go on offense. And, but he also needs to, to hit that three. And uh, anytime you can get as many guys as you can that can take good threes and make them like we have, you know, you want to encourage that. You mentioned the defensive progress uh, before. Can you just speak to Dakota's improvement and just what that's meant to well, the he, team? He's, yeah, he's spearheaded. There's no doubt he's at the top um, of, of that pile. He, he's been very good. And if you look at the guys he's guarded, you know, tonight, you know, he guarded um, Wade for the most of the time, and he came in averaging close to 20. He got 13 on 13 shots, but he turned it over six times. You know, Covington other night, he, he did a very good job on him. He did a, he did a good job on Basturia. He had three. Um, in that game, so um, he, he's made the most improvements um, as a defensive player. There's no doubt about that. I, I just it's the attention to detail, you know, concentrating on your job, doing what you're supposed to be doing. He's always going to probably struggle 
a little bit out in space for his ultimate quickness. Um, but you know, he, he does everything that you ask him to do and he pays attention and watches film and um, he's gotten pretty good. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.